Here's how I made these pixel perfect window textures for my game Kook in Blender. This turned out to be more challenging than expected because Blender renders are super blurry by default. To fix that, go to the Render tab, Film, then set Pixel Filter Width to 0.5. It seems this must be radius because even if you set the value to 1.0, the result is still blurry. Now let's take a step back and I'll show you how I set everything up. My startup file isn't standard, so we'll just delete everything and start from scratch. I just use one meter per pixel because it's convenient, so let's shift A, add a cube, and make it 64 meters. Tab to edit, SX.5 to make it half as wide, select the front face, I2 to inset two pixels, I1 to inset another pixel, GY1 to move it back, EY16 to extrude in, and I'm not going to walk you through every step of making a window. You might not even want to make a window texture. If you care about a height map, you'll want to position the front of the mesh at zero on the Y axis. Added cameras use the current view angle, so you can press numpad 1 to look straight forward, then shift A, camera. Back the camera up a little and set it to orthographic. Click the printer icon to go to the output properties and set your desired output resolution. I'm using 32 by 64. Back on the camera tab, set orthographic scale to match your largest resolution, 64 in my case. Your camera should exactly match the size of your mesh now. Now we need to set up some lighting. Click on the globe tab for world properties, then click the color slot, then environment texture. Now click on the folder to open an image. Of course, you can do whatever you want for lighting, but I find environment textures look the most natural, and Blender has a few included if you dig into the Blender install directory, version number, data files, studio lights, world. I like the forest EXR. You'll want to switch the render engine to cycles for the best quality. Unfortunately, by default, the lighting is kind of backward for the way our model is facing, so we need to rotate it. Click on the shading tab, then click the drop down to switch from object to world. Right click, add input, texture coordinate. Take the object output and map it to a vector rotate. I find an angle of about 111 degrees works well. And don't forget to go into the render properties, film, and set pixel filter width to 0.5 like I mentioned at the start of the video. Now just add some more detail, and if you don't need to render any other maps other than just color, you're good to go. But for Kook, I need a normal map and a height map for lighting and self-shadowing, and this is where things get really ugly. Ideally, you could just set the render engine to workbench, select a normal map mat cap, and render. But there's no pixel filter setting under film, so the window frame and curtains are just cursed to forever be blending into each other. That means we have to create a normal map map shader ourselves to render in Cycles or Eevee. So add a material to the mesh if you don't already have one, go back to the shading tab, switch the nodes back over from world to object, right click, add input texture coordinate, take the normal output and map it to a vector transform. Set it to normal and we want to go from object to camera space so the normal map is relative to the camera. Since normal map textures don't have negative colors, we can fix that with a vector math node set to multiply add. Scale the components by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and negative 0.5, then we add 0.5 for each component. So we've gone from a negative 1 to 1 range to a 0 to 1 range. Now our normal map looks sharp, but the colors are all blown out. That's because Blender is converting it from linear to sRGB space. So go back to the render properties, make sure film exposure is set to 1, and under color management set display device to none, make sure exposure and gamma are 0 and 1, and set sequencer to raw for good measure. You may notice we have some artifacts on areas that should have a flat value, so you'll probably want to disable the denoise option and bump the min samples for the render up to ensure a better render quality. For the height map, which you may not need, I started off with another texture coordinates node, this time mapping the object coordinates to world coordinates using the vector transform node. A scale node brings the world positions into a 0 to 1 range, so the value depends on the size of your object, but a scale of 0 0.08 worked for me. Since I'm using the Y axis for depth, we need to separate X, Y, Z and grab the Y components. And since I want the values closer to zero to be higher, I add a vector math subtract node to do one minus the value. I only want the red channel, so I do a combine X, Y, Z with just the X component, but you can skip this for a grayscale depth map. Now we have our depth rendered in the red channel. You might need to tweak the scale value if it doesn't have the range you want for your object size. Adding some mix shader nodes can make it easier to jump between rendering different maps so you don't have to constantly connect different nodes to the output. The parameters show up on the Material Properties tab, so you can tweak them without having to edit the nodes. You can also group the nodes with Control g This allows for easier reuse in other materials, and you can also put names on the input parameters so you know what you're changing. Press Tab to go in and out of editing groups. For editing and diffuse renders, you'll need to switch the display device under Color Management back to sRGB. To keep more things in a single material, you can use Vertex Colors by selecting Vertex Paint in the Mode dropdown. To color specific faces, you can hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, select the face you want, tab back into Paint Mode, click the Paint Mask button right next to the dropdown, select your color, then hit Shift-K to fill. You can Control i to invert your selection in Edit Mode to fill everything else with a different color. And of course, if you want the whole mesh one color, you can just hit Shift-K with the mask disabled. To make colors show up in the render, we'll need to set the base color in our shader to use the Color Attribute Color. Since it is such a pain to change so many settings each time you want to render a map, one suggestion I had was to add them to keyframes in an animation. So on frame 1, we could have our diffuse render, setting keyframes on the color management display device to sRGB and our material parameters such that normal and depth are disabled. Frame 2 can be our normal map with that material parameter keyframed on and display device keyframed back to none. Frame 3 for the height map with keyframes for display device on none and the appropriate material parameters. 
Now you can switch between frames and render different color maps. There might be a better way or some add-ons to make this a little less tedious, but this works well enough if you're not rendering an animated texture. If you're creating a tiling texture, you can add array modifiers, one on the x-axis with a constant offset of your texture width and the count set to three, and another on the z-axis or y if you're modeling top down. Then just center your camera in the middle using something like GX64, GZ64, adjust your mesh so that it lines up on the edges and it should tile pretty well. If you're using procedural noise, you might see some seams as I'll demonstrate with an exaggerated example. To fix this, we'll need to jump into the fourth dimension. Instead of directly using the object texture coordinates for noise, we'll run them through some sine and cosine functions so they repeat. First, scale the object coordinates to tau over the object size, in my case, tau over 64. Then, separate x, y, z. Map the x to a sine and cosine, and the z to a sine and cosine as well, or y if you're modeling top down. Use combine x, y, z for the top three sine and cosine values. Set the noise texture to 4D and connect the combined vector to the vector input. Connect the final cosine output to the w component. Now everything should tile perfectly. You'll probably need to adjust the noise scale to match what you had before. I've put the Blender source files up on my Patreon if you don't want to bother manually adding all these nodes. Becoming a patron also gives you priority on tutorial requests, and you get your name on a list like these awesome people. Tutorials like this take a lot of time and effort to put together, so I really appreciate the support. Finally, if you want to see the results of this technique in action, be sure to wishlist Kook on Steam so you don't miss it when it launches in like eight years or whenever I get it done. <laughs> Maybe.